So this week, we're going to be taking you out back. We're going to be showing you how we're going to do the rough turning and the machining on the bridge board of the two shafts for our dresser for the OD grinder, which, uh, as you know, we I didn't like the one that was there in the first place. And the next video, we're going to be doing the finished grinding on both shafts, and we're going to be doing the mounting of the block on the tailstock. So let's go out back and take a look and see how we do it. So here we are at the OD grinder. We've got a couple of bars of stock that we're going to be working with. We're going to bore a hole in there somewhere in there, not quite sure where, but this will give you an idea about what we're going to be doing on the lathe. So we're going to be on our way over to the lathe. Here we go. So we're at the lathe now, and this is the smaller piece of stock. That's the one that's going to be holding the diamond. So we're going to face it off, put a center drill in there, and of course we're going to drill a hole in there too, which is where the diamond is going to be. So on one side we only need the center, and on the other side, we're going to have to center drill and drill it and so forth. So here we go. We're going to drill this out. And because it's it's not a critical dimension, I didn't decide to use a reamer. I'm just using a drill. Uh, so this is a rough cut with a drill. We're going to take another drill and uh, we'll use that as a, as a reamer. So I've checked the size that I want right here and I said okay because 375 is the number so we're gonna go to no not there that's two set there we go 377 that's a V drill so that's a uh, an alpha drill and uh, here we are with the with the alpha drill in there you know, put a little oil in there give it a shot we're gonna go back to why well, I don't know about about an inch I think or three quarters of an inch Keep in mind, there's no print involved with any of this. We just decided, or I just decided, to say, well, I'm going to wing it. So that's, there we go. Let's see if the diamond fits. Nice slip fit. Perfect. So we're good to go on that piece. So that one's done. Now we're going to do the large bar. And that one, we're going to have to take quite a bit of stock off of it. As you can see, it's substantially larger in diameter. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut it off. Now, I could have taken it over the saw to cut it off, but the saw guys are busy, so it's just as easy for me to put a cutoff tool in there and whack off the piece that I don't need. Again, there's no print for this. I just kind of eyeballed everything. I didn't sketch anything. I didn't use any Daikin Blue and say, well, we're going to do it here and do it there. I pretty much have eyeballed everything. So we've got the cutoff tool working, and we're going to whack this baby off. Looks like we're cutting off about three inches of stock that we don't need. And uh, we're going to speed it up a little bit so we don't, we, we don't bore you. We don't, we don't want you going to sleep on us. So now the next thing is to center drill that end. And we'll center drill it. And we're going to drill it as well. Kind of exciting, eh? Watching a center drill. And again, this is speeded up a little bit. So it's not real speed. I think we're up probably two, two three times normal. Although, right there, it doesn't look like it. That looks like normal speed there. So we'll back that guy out. Pull the tailstock away. And we'll put our live center in. That allows us to extend the bar way out like so. So it supports it much better. And we'll be able to take a, a much bigger cut without the thing shaking all over the place. So we're going to lock it down. We're good to go here. We're putting in our cutting tool. Want to settle it, make sure that we're on center. Remember, you want to be on center or just slightly below center. So this was really a tight fit in here. There was not a lot of room between this, the live center and the tool bit itself. So we're taking a pretty healthy cut here. Remember, we're cutting this bar, I think, is about 14 inches long, something like that. Look at that baby roll now. Well, that's not actual real speed, as you can probably tell. But again, we don't want to bore you to tears. Good chips, nice and blue. Love it. That's what it ought to look like. And there we go with our onward cut. Now we're taking a second cut. Keep, you know, I also did some checking in there. I took calipers to see where the size was that I wanted. So that gave me a pretty good idea as to what the finish size was going to be. And I, again, there's nothing critical on any of this. If I made it uh, 30 thousandths bigger or 10 thousandths smaller, I could fix that at any time. However, it was a lot easier for me to make it the right size 
uh, which was, I want to think that was uh, three quarter if I'm not mistaken. So here we're going to take our finish cut for three quarter. And I'm, I left about 30 thousandths on there. Why? Because <clears throat> I want to have grind stock on there. So when we take the OD grinder that we've got some grind stock. Usually about 15 thousandths a side should work. I didn't like the feel of that, so I checked it underneath. So we finished that. So we're taking a smaller piece now. And we're going to drill and, and tap a hole in there where the diamond goes. So that will give us <clears throat> the ability to have a set screw in there or some kind of a screw to secure the diamond in place. So we center drill it and we drill it with a number seven drill which is the size you need for a quarter 20. Pretty easy. You just want to be careful not to go through the whole thing all the way to the other side. We finish that. Put our tap in there. And remember how we talked about we've got the video on tapping without a tapping head by leaving it loose. Well there it's a little bit too loose so I snugged it down just a little bit more and I was able to tap it all the way through. So we've, we again we've, we cut the video down so we're not showing you all the movements but we turned it around here. This is the other piece now and we're going to center drill and drill all the way through and we're going to ream it. Why? Because this is where the other bar that we just, that's going to hold the diamond, is going to fit into. And again, I just eyeballed it. I said, eh, you know, I center drill it right about here. I think we should drill it there. That ought to work. And, and I, I could have laid it out, but frankly, I was just as comfortable with working without a print. And uh, I, fortunately, I did not make any mistakes, so I didn't screw anything up. But, you know, I could have. I, I think that. As a kid, I probably wouldn't have done it this way. I would have asked for somebody to give me a print, but uh, I'm comfortable with the machine. I'm comfortable with what I was doing and eyeballing it. And it turns out pretty good. So uh, here, I guess we've gone all the way through. And now we've taken a larger drill. And after that drill, we're going to go ahead and put the reamer in. And there's a lot of cranking up and down of the bed, but you're, you, don't, you didn't need to see that. There's no point in wasting your time and watching things that aren't necessary. So here we're putting a lot of oil on. We're running this at about three times normal speed. Keeping the chips out with a brush. I'm feeling pretty good that we got a slot all the way through there. And as you can see, there's a bar in there that fits pretty good. Not the finish size, obviously, for what we're going to be doing. But we're going to find the center here. And we're going to put a slot in there. So. The idea of the slot is it'll allow us to compress the, the diameter around the diamond. So once we finish that slot, which is kind of cool, I, I like slotting. So there we go. So now we're going to center drill it and we're going to put a set screw in there or provision for a set screw, I should say. So we're going to drill it all the way through with the number seven drill. We can go all the way through to the bottom because the first part, the first half doesn't mean anything. The second half is what's going to hold the tap. And we're going to put, to put a clearance in here, right here. So we're, we put a clearance in there. There we go. And there's a countersink in there. And we're going to make that just a little bit bigger for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. I think the countersink didn't work quite right. So now we've got a countersunk hole. We've got a clearance hole in the top half. That's not tapping, by the way. It may look like it is, but it's not. So now we're going down to the bottom. We're tapping all the way down at the bottom. So we were tapping the bottom half right down there, not the top half. We, we need clearance at the top, a thread at the bottom. So that's the story, and we're looking forward to sending these to Heat Treat. When we get them back, we're going to be grinding them, and we're going to show you the next video about how we grind them, and we're going to show you how uh, we fit all three pieces together and the, and the block that's going to hold it that we're going to mount on the tailstock. 
So look forward to the next video. We're excited about that one as well because that one's going to be a lot of fun putting all together and to see if the thing even works. When I say works, I mean, are all is this thing going to work dimensionally? I don't see why not, but you never know. Did I make it too short, too long? We're going to find out. I think of, my guess is all the parts are uh, the proper length and uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty cool about it. So uh, again, thanks for watching and uh, remember to subscribe and tell your friends about us. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And, uh, and by the way, we're on LinkedIn too. So check us out. Looking forward to seeing you at the next video. Thanks for watching.